Wow. Today's word, Second Samuel chapter 23. Read the whole thing. I'm going to be going through a little bit of it. Um, it says, these are the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, speaks. David, the man who was raised up so high. David, the man anointed by God of Jacob. David, the sweet psalmist of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks through him. His words are upon my tongue. The God of Israel spoke. The rock of Israel said to me, the one who rules righteously, who rules in the fear of God, is like the light of morning at sunrise, like a morning without clouds, like the gleaning of the sun of the new grass, like after rain. Is it not my family God has chosen? Yes, he has made an everlasting covenant with me. His agreement is arranged and guaranteed in every detail. He will ensure my safety and success. But the godless are like thorns to be thrown away, for they tear the hand that touches them. One must use iron tools to chop them down. They will be totally consumed by fire. And then he goes into the mighty men of valor, like the mighty men, mighty warriors that fought next to David. And we're going to go to 11 and 12, because 11 and 12 says, Next in rank was Shammah, son of Agi from Har. The time the Philistine gathered at Lehi and attacked the Israelites in the field full of lentil. The Israelites' army fled, but Shammah held his ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines until the Lord brought about great victory. I don't know. I've been getting Oh, Jesus. So number one, hold your ground. The king is with you. This word spoke so dear to my heart because this year the Lord spoke a lot about community. He spoke about the people that surround you. Are these people that are going to fight on your behalf? Because the people that are with you are the people that are anointed to be with you. And just like David, we spoke in the beginning about David in Psalm 23. I mean, that's Psalms. Samuel, 2 Samuel 23, where David was anointed for this position, meaning the Holy Spirit was with him. And so anyone that was with him too was anointed with the power and authority and anointed, hold on, to defend what was theirs, right? Think about it. If you was a group with a group of friends and whatever that was going to go down while you were out, y'all were all going to be at one. Y'all was all going to defend what was true, what was right, what was good. And so that is what God is showing you right now. He also sent us the first Chronicle 11, 13, 4. I won't read that, but I will tell you to go to it. Because what God said is mighty men, men that fought next to the anointed king, we're fighting next to Jesus, right? And he says, you, we work and we labor. Don't allow the enemy to take your harvest. Hold your ground and defend what is rightly yours. And then hold, and then God will give you the strength for your victory. So the only reason why I believe David was able to forego through the journey that he was on is because of the people that surrounded him. The people that surrounded him believed in what he believed in, fought for what he fought in, and went to high levels and, 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 and followed the leader. They, they looked at David as their leader, which he was. And then it goes down there. Faith doesn't go into action until you put it into action. The Lord said that the story happening. However, faith doesn't go into action until you put it into action. Meaning, when you read a word and it's, yeah, it sounds so good. Oh, my God, it's so true. It doesn't work. It's not applied to you until you begin to walk that thing out. Be intentional about not only oh, Jesus, receiving the word, declaring the word, but walking out the word. Hallelujah. And it says, this should be your last time where you, where you allow the enemy to come in and take what God is doing in your life. The meaning, do not allow the enemy to steal what you have been working towards. Do not allow the enemy to take your harvest. Defend your harvest. Did you read right here what he says in 2 Samuel? He began to talk about David and who he was and, and a little bit about him. But then it went into his mighty warriors. And he said here that in verses 11 and 12, it says, but the, the man with Shema held his ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines so the Lord brought about a great you defend what is yours the enemy can't touch it you have legal rights over what God has called, um, spoken over your life just like David David defended himself defended what he believed all the way until God crowned him hallelujah and through that it went through his lineage right blessings prosperity um, favor God, God gave him favor all throughout his journey Hallelujah. And then it goes here. It says, you need to say this time, this to be right now. Look at the things that are going on in your life and look at the situations that you continue to go through. And you need to stand your ground and tell the enemy, this will be the last time you take this. This will be the last time you 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 allow, you, you, you take my finances, that you, you take my marriage, you take what's mine. This will be the last time. I remember when I first began on this journey, the Lord gave me a dream. And the dream um, was the enemy on one side and the, and the angel on the other. But the angel, the enemy kept on laughing, laughing at me, laughing at me. Like what a, the, the most disgusting laugh that I've ever heard before in my life. And then it was like an angel in the other corner, this bright light that just had their hands out. But the enemy kept on laughing at me. And I remember when I woke up from that dream, it was like a whole dream of just those two options. You remember how you have the angel on one side and the devil on the other? That's kind of how it was, but I was in a room. And and when I woke up, the first thing I said, I would not allow the enemy to take what's mine again. He, I would not allow him, well, more than was, I would not laugh, laugh at me again. But that's when I began to take my journey and my walk seriously. It is, it is not, I am, I 
am not going to be doing the things I'm doing and growing and being delivered and being set free and begin to just sit back and allow the enemy to take all the things that I've been planting or what the Lord's been planting in me. No. Don't look at the things that are small right now in your life and think they're insignificant. Because remember, everything is planted with seed and it grows into a tree. And just like what the Lord talked about in Ezekiel, I don't know the chapter right now, where the Lord says he plants a thing by the water and it grows to be mighty and rooted. That is what is happening for you. When God talks about his people, he says sons and daughters, but he also initiates them as um, warriors. And warriors defend, warriors fight, warriors stand for something. And in this season, that's what you need to begin to look at things like. You need to defend what's yours. You need to fight for what's yours. And I'm not saying that in the physical. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this all in the spiritual. And you need to begin to tell the enemy where he belongs back to where he goes remember the enemy was rooted out a long time ago that's why he's trying to stop you from getting what he lost but no stay focused seek the lord and all in his righteousness and all things shall be added to you keep your eyes focused on jesus right. galatians chapter 6 verses 7 to 10 says don't be misled you cannot mock the justice of god you will always harvest what you plant those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature but those who live to please the spirit will harvest everlasting life from the spirit so let's not be get tired of doing what is good at just the right time we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't give up therefore whenever we have the opportunity we should do good to anyone especially to those in the family of faith i hope y'all receive that shalom family